Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Gaurav. I'm an artist and instructor. And in this video, we are going to talk about drawing faces. Do watch this video till the end as we are going to have a look at how you can draw a face using Riley's method. I would really like to thank everyone who has already subscribed the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel and I hope you continue to do so. So guys, there are lots of different ways of drawing faces. Drawing faces or portraits is a challenging task. You want to make a drawing that represents the identity of a real person or an imaginary character. And the face is already a complex form with different features and variations. Learning to draw the head and facial features can be very overwhelming. But you must remember that everything can be broken down into simple shapes and forms. This way, you can easily build up step by step and achieve the final drawing. Drawing heads is not something new. In fact, there are many different approaches that have been identified and published in books or as videos. You must have heard about various methods and techniques that make drawing faces easy. Today we are going to look at the three popular methods. The first one is the grid method. I am sure you must have heard of it. You draw a grid over the reference image and then draw the same grid on your drawing sheet and replicate whatever you see in each of the squares. Personally, I don't prefer this as it only allows you to copy an image. You basically learn nothing about the construction and anatomy of the face. It is good for upscaling or downscaling a drawing traditionally, but not for learning how to draw. The second one is the Loomis method. The Loomis method explains the construction of the head by using simple forms and measured proportions. You start with a sphere, break it into four equal sections with two lines, flatten the side part and then place the features using the derived measurements. It has been talked about a lot and you must be familiar with it. But we are here to discuss the Riley's method. So Frank Riley was also an American illustrator and teacher just like Andrew Loomis. Both existed around the same time. Riley had a more intricate approach towards the drawing process. His drawing method emphasizes line and shape design and clear value control. He identified certain rhythms in the head and the body. The flow of these rhythm lines complements the form and helps to see things in abstraction first and then develop a blueprint over which you can add the features and other details. His method of drawing the head has been adapted by various artists and it has evolved over time. This method combined with the Loomis method can give you a solid understanding of the face. Let us understand this with the drawing. So if you are familiar with the basic head construction with the Loomis method, you will be able to understand this quite well. I'll try to keep it simple for you. Start with a sphere for the cranium. Then bisect it vertically and horizontally. The horizontal line is going to be the brow line. Then you roughly find the hairline above this brow line. Drop the same distance below the brow line for the tip of the nose and then drop the same distance below the nose for the chin. You can draw the shape for the jaw now. Then you mark the eye line which is halfway on the total shape of the head. Now you can mark the top and bottom of the ears. They would be roughly between the eyes and the nose tip.
find the corner of the brow where it turns and cuts off the side of the head. Cut back from the top of the ear into the shape of the head to find the bottom of the eye socket. Put in the glabella, a triangular wedge between the eyes. This is also called the keystone as it is the most important shape in the face. Draw an oval touching the hairline and the eye line. This is called the frontalis. This creates two triangle wedges on the inside of the eye socket. Draw the eyeballs touching this oval. Then find the rhythm of the temple from the outside corners of the eyes and the corner of the eyebrows. Also draw the rhythm for the hairline. You will start getting the top plane and the temple. Now put in the nose using a simple triangular wedge. Connect it to the keystone with two vertical lines. This will create the front of the nose. Connect the corners of the nose by drawing a curve touching the edge of the eyeballs and the glabella. Add a small oval to represent the ball of the nose. For the rhythm of the mouth, you can create another oval passing over this ball of the nose. This represents the orbicularis oris or the muzzle of the mouth. Draw another smaller oval touching the bottom of the chin overlapping the muzzle. Draw a curve and a straight line connecting the mouth corners to form the upper lip. Now put a teardrop shape above the top lip. This is called the philtrum. Find the corner of the mouth. Create an arcing line from the corner of the mouth, passing through the top of the ear and coming down to the bottom of the ear on either side. This will give you the cheekbone. Draw a straight line across the bottom of the lower lip to find the intersection for the jawline. Now find the laugh line. Draw an oval starting from the bottom of the chin and passing over the oval that you made for the nose. Now let's have a look at the same rhythms from the side. Remember to draw the side of the face as an oval and not as a circle.
So there you have the structure of the head. Now let's try to understand how will you find these rhythms in the face of a person. Let's draw from a reference. These methods should help as a guide to explore and develop your skill. They should not become your limitation. Every person is different. Make sure you observe the uniqueness in every face. Be willing to modify the proportions and orientation of shapes as required. Try to visualize everything in 3D and draw through the forms. You will need a lot of practice, but that will be worth it. Enjoy the process. I hope that helps you. If you really like the video, do write your views in the comments. Also, let me know what kind of videos would you like to see in the future. I would love to help you guys with your drawing processes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.